Hey, let's learn about how to write an entire ebook using AI. So this is my process, this is what I found useful in order to make the content not terrible, <laughs> because if you just ask it to write an ebook, it's gonna get bad results. So the first thing I start with is a summary, and uh, this is the prompt here. The, I basically ask it to please look up the specific topic, and that's gonna use Bing to research. I'm just gonna paste in the topic here and hit enter. And the reason why I do this is because I think it's really important for it to be grounded in the stuff that ranks on Google. Uh, so in, this is a good way to make sure that you're covering things in the ebook that other people are writing about and that the post is comprehensive. Because if you're just writing based off your own insights, then you might have missed something. Of course, this is looking up the, the topic. It's found that it was developed by Google. It's an R package. And it's, it can help, for example, determine the impact of an advertising campaign, yeah, which is what I've used it for as well. Okay, cool. That is really helpful and that's already pretty useful, right? That's already going to get you better results actually than if you uh, simply just ask it to write an ebook on the topic because you've given it some time to think essentially yeah, and to do some research. So it's got fresh information here. All right. The next thing though is that you need to give it your own twist because otherwise I don't think it's particularly moral to make content that it doesn't have anything from you and it's not going to be particularly interesting either to be honest. Here we go. Based on the following insights plus the summary above, generate an outline for ebook on topic with chapters, sections and subsections. So let's copy and paste the topic across. Just We're just reinforcing this and then we need to fill this part in insights. So um, you can be more or less in depth and you can put more or less insights in here, but I'm just gonna put a handful in just to demo. So one insight is this is a particularly viable method since iOS 14 happened and uh, you can no longer statistically track users based Identifier. So that's one piece of important insight that isn't in the summary that I've been talking about. The other thing is I'll say, yeah, this method can be unreliable when dealing with cross-channel events because uh, it might give overlapping credit channels. Uh, so that's just another insight that I've had uh, from in the past. Let's say sometimes this gives nonsensical results. Uh, for example, it might say your Facebook ads drove negative revenue. Uh, when that's probably not possible unless So I'm just going to keep those three insights there. You can put more in. One thing I also do is I like Google specific things and add them in there. Um, so I mean, we can just do that as an example. Like maybe look for a case study. I'm going to look for this in marketing. I'm just going to find something that's interesting here. Okay. Just gonna copy in and put an image in here. And then just say uh, cool. That's something that we can hopefully use to create an image of our own and later in the actual blog post presentation. So I'm just going to paste that in. And what that's going to do now is add these insights into 
a an outline uh, for the ebook. And uh, the reason why we create an outline first is that in general, I find that giving it tokens to think, like giving it some ideas in terms of planning out what it's going to tends to improve performance. And there's a lot of studies that show that. The other thing is that it gives us a chance to edit the outline if we don't like certain parts or if we find things are missing. The final thing it allows us to do is just make the length a lot longer because generally it tends to be pretty concise, like it won't write too much in one, one section. By splitting out to multiple sections here, then that's one trick to get it to write more because then you can say write section 1.1, write section 1.2, write section 1.3, and so on. So that's what we're going to do next. And once we get the outline, uh, we're going to, first of all, generate some title options, get a good sense of the title. And then second of all, we're going to expand on the outline with a summary of what's going to be covered, because then that kind of fleshes out even more of the, of the plan once we're happy with the actual outline. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this outline. Uh, so introduction, importance of it, it's talking about the IDFA, which is something I mentioned specifically, which is great. You can see that coming through. And then it's made a pretty good section here. Like it's talking about like things like the counterfactual and intervention. Uh, these are things that we didn't get, uh, like I didn't provide, but, but the summary did or its own knowledge did, which is really useful. It also leaves the space here for including the provided image and then asks, uh, adds extra things we might need. Um, and then I would say uh, we probably want to add you know, add a tutorial se section where we'll provide the code to run to a impact analysis on SEO change, oh, SEO tactic. Um, and then it's just going to add that to the to the outline. We could also. Um, ask it to remove certain things if we didn't want them as well. Uh, so if we didn't want, you know, this final section, uh, for example, but you know, it's low cost to iterate on this. Um, if we're just, uh, if we're just changing you know, one line at a time, it doesn't take a long time to generate. We can get a pretty good a sense of what we need. Cool. So while that's running, I'm just going to paste in the next thing, which is generate 10 very creative title options. And I found, you know, I've tried lots of different ways to do this, but I found in general, it's, it's good at generating lots of options. And uh, if you put the word very creative, it tends to get, give you a pretty good range of stuff. Well, so the, there we go. So this is uh, running this stuff out. You see where we put the tutorial. One of the benefits of doing it this way, even if you write the book yourself, is that you get like a really comprehensive outline. It gives you a really good score, like here are the different things we need to cover. And I think that's, yeah, that's pretty valuable in and of itself. So even if you stopped here and you just started to write these sections yourself, you've already saved a bunch of time and, and I think improved your chances of this being useful. So here we go. We have now at chapter seven, we have this tutorial um, and it's part of the subsections like loading, processing data, defining intervention period, etc. Okay, so generate 10 very creative title options. <laughs> Time Traveler's Guide to SEO. Causal Conundrums. <laughs> decoding SEO Tactics. I quite like decoding. Beyond the Click. That's pretty cool. Data Alchemy. Yeah, I would say I really like the beyond the click. And you could just combine different parts of this if you want. So I'm just gonna say we're gonna go go with this title. And then just say acknowledge so that it won't type too much extra stuff. Like sometimes it will start to actually write the post after that, which you don't want right now. Cool, so now I can say this last one here, which is expand on the outline with the summary of what will be covered in each chapter, section, and subsection. So I'm just gonna paste that in here. And now it's gonna go through and you can see it's chosen, the, it's selected the title that we've given it. 
And that's going to affect the summary, which is why I think it's important to put the title in first. I can't come up with a good title unless it has the outline. So uh, that's the order of operations here. And here we go. So we can see now we're getting a little bit more information for each each section. And you can see that now you have the shopping list of what we need to cover in each, uh, which is really helpful. And I'm just going to regenerate there because it's network error. This is part of the fun of working with ChatGPT. <laughs> But while that is running, the, we're going to set up something else, which is the actual writing. There's a, a few different options here uh, because we need a pretty long context window to do this. Uh, so I'm just going to open up. This is the OpenAI platform. This is the developer platform if you create an account. And one of the benefits of doing this is that you can go to the Turbo model, which is the, this, the preview. So yeah, this one here, a GPT-4 preview. And what that allows you to do is that you can fit, I think it's 120,000 tokens in the context window. Whereas with the you know, normal chat GPT, it's, I think it's 8,000 or something like that. This will give you plenty of space to write a whole book. The other option, if you don't want to sit up, sign up for a developer account, if you go to Claude, and Claude has a 100,000 token limit, it's a competitor to chat GPT. So it's going to uh, create a new chat. And I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. So I'm going to try this one. So what we're doing is we're starting fresh with a new context window now that we have all of this. So let me see, we're going to put in, let's go back and get the topic. Okay. And then we need to paste in the outline and the insights. So just let's grab the insights. Okay, paste them in there. And then we're going to paste in uh, the outline as well. And we're going to run it in Claude and in GPT-4. So just need to click continue generating. It's still going. Okay, just gonna put the title. And then copy this. Okay, so this is finished generating, so we can grab everything. Okay, now we have the outline and we have all the summaries within these outlines, which is really helpful, and then we have all the the insights at the bottom. So I'm going to copy and paste this and put this into Claude as well. Now, oh yeah, let's turn this into a file. And now the, I wonder if we can, uh, we don't really want this as a file, but let's hit it anyway. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so it is, it is actually, you know, using it, which is nice. Okay, so you can see one thing straight away that Claude doesn't really follow instructions as well because what we wanted was we wanted to write the sections one, one at a time. You might need to work a little bit on this, but it is doing a pretty decent job so far of writing out the preface. And the other thing you want to do, okay, so yeah, it's got the preface first here, but then we could just say continue and then it should generate the next section. Yeah, here we go. So it's going to keep continuing. And so this is really the process. And you could obviously automate this at some point, but if you're writing a whole ebook, like it doesn't take, <laughs> you're saving like a couple of weeks worth of work here. But you can see it's doing a pretty good job of generating the text. It's got a good length. If it doesn't have a very good length, depending on the topic, you could just ask it. You can say, the reason I like to do this in line is like say, okay, you didn't cover this, or can you expand? Can you make this longer? As you can say, make this longer. And then it will rewrite it and make it longer, which is really helpful. Now, while that's running, why don't we try 
this. So just gonna hit uh, submit. And there we go. And you can compare the difference. So it's saying, in an age where the digital landscape is rapidly evolving, the role of effective measurement cannot be overstated. Whereas uh, the professor, in a world where data privacy is becoming increasingly important, marketers face new challenges when it comes to understanding campaign effectiveness. So you can decide you know, which one you like, but yeah, here we go. So now it's got an expanded section here. And if you're happy with that, you can make changes or whatever. So that is, that is how it works. You just keep, keep going, continue. And then as you, as you get the, the text and as you finish each section, then you get to the point where you, you can copy and paste all this across to a uh, Google doc. One of the things you might want to do here is just edit the maximum length and the tokens. So this is like how much of a response it can get back. You can say next section and hopefully it will write the whole section now and it'll just keep going with that. But you can also experiment with messing around with the system message. This is where I'd put like your tone of voice, so style guide, if you want it written in a specific way. And then you can also go back and add additional case studies or things like that to the outline if needed. That's probably the point where you want to get the outline approved with your client or, or you approve it and, and add in additional things. Like you can put in uh, specific statistics or whatever you want it to quote. So that is, that is the process. You keep going with this and you can see here, if I just copy and paste, let's use a word counter. Uh, so here we've got like 288 words for this first section, you know, section 1.1. And we have, I guess it's what? Looks like about like 20, 30 sec sections here. So we're going to have, let's say, you know, 25 times 288. So it's a 7,000 word essay we're going to get. And it's going to take us probably another like 15 minutes to get this. Uh, so, you know, within an hour, you could have 10,000 word ebook, <laughs> which is pretty powerful. Uh, and, and I found that the results are pretty good when you do it this way. It sounds a bit more human because it's using your own insights and it's using the summary as well. So it's more fresh and up to date and it gives you the most flexibility because you can add stuff in, you can take stuff away and you have a chance to talk back and forth and correct it if it does something wrong. So make sure that you check it for hallucinations. It's one of the main things you need, definitely need to pay an editor to look over this. But other than that, you should be in pretty good position.